Hey guys, welcome back to the 15th episode of the 1.19 Skyblock series. So in between episodes, I've only been AFKing here at the Fox Farm. I already picked up six emeralds. Let's check how much more we got. Okay, 31 more emeralds. So this is a total of 37. This should definitely be enough for the wounding trader. Okay, we also got a lot of sweet berries again. Eggs, wheat, rabbit hide, rabbit foot, leather and feathers. There's also one more powder snow I can pick up. What's even the plan for the day? So technically I think it might be best if it would go straight to the one trader platform and AFK a little bit. So we have a chance to get an oak sapling again. But I want to play the game instead and do some stuff. So we could breed pigs finally. So we can yeah, get a bit of gold later. Uh, another option would be to do something with the spruce and birch saplings we got. Maybe get a different type of wood. And maybe even get some bees with the birch sapling. So we'll definitely find something to do. I'll also bring over those eggs here. Those could become really useful. So I'm already planning ahead. Um, I think I need to explain this. So once we actually are in the situation where we can convert zombie villagers into villagers, means we have access to villagers, but not all the professions of villagers. For example, to get a librarian, we would need to get a lectern, which requires at least one bookshelf. In order to get a bookshelf, the only way, well, we can't buy it from librarian because we don't have one in the first place, um, we need to get some paper. So we could get into a situation later that we have two villagers, but we can't get a lectern, uh, which would be super useful to get all the enchantments right away. But there is one exploit that would allow us to get a librarian without a lectern. So if you convert a zombie villager into a normal villager, they keep their profession for exactly one tick. So a twentieth of a second. And at that one tick, you could actually trade with them. Um, but it's, it's uh, yeah, kind of a problem because if you actually in that one tick click on them, open the GI in the next tick, so in a fraction of a second later, it will be closed again. Um, we could maybe try to lag the game somehow. So we have maybe a bit more time, like a second to actually trade with a um, librarian. So they would keep the profession. So usually all the, the zombie villagers you get convert become unemployed. And in order to lag the game, a lot of chickens might be a good option. So that's why I'm already thinking ahead. If we don't get sugarcane from the warning trader, but I already have everything else to get zombie villagers, this is something we should probably just yeah have as an option. So that's why I'm bringing home the eggs. Back at the main area, I have an idea now what to do in this episode. So I want to start breeding pigs, but I definitely don't want to do it here mostly because of the lag issue, like having hundreds of animals around here wouldn't be good. And, and you just don't do that. <laughs> so I live in Bavaria, in an urban area, but if I'm out with my yeah, bike, I definitely come across some pigsties sometimes in the rural areas. And that's like the worst smell ever. So you never have big pigsty next to where people live. <laughs> And we should also do that here. So my plan was now to maybe go out like 500 blocks towards that direction and breed the pigs over there. And I was thinking it would be actually cool if we would have some sort of fast travel now. Now we have the horse, can ride at 12 meters per second, but we actually have some frost walker books now. I was thinking we could actually make um, yeah, some sort of a tunnel where we just placed on some water and freeze the water with the frost walker boots. So we can fast travel the boat, but of course it's going to require a lot of building blocks um, because we need to completely encase it so no light can melt the ice. And I was thinking now that we have the spruce saplings, this might also be an option to get a lot of building blocks quickly because we can grow two by two spruce trees. So I was thinking we should actually just start with that, um, gathering some saplings. So we need at least four for the big two by two spruce tree. So let's see, let's just chop down the first one and hope that we get a sapling back. There's so many leaves, we would need to be super unlucky to not get a sapling. Oh, there's the first one, perfect. So getting saplings is really not a problem, it was already up to 14, we are growing 8 trees again. And after we chop down those, we should definitely have enough to start growing two with two trees. But we're not gonna do it here because I'm really afraid that we're just gonna convert all the grass into potsoil here immediately. We shouldn't do that. 
I have 26 saplings in total now, I think this should be enough to get started. I actually want to grow multiple 2v2 trees next to each other and blow them up with TNT. That's going to require to have a lot of dirt for the trees to grow on. I was thinking we should maybe pick up half a stack of dirt blocks here and move it to a different area. I've been growing some pumpkins here on the side, I guess we can just take out this part and just leave a couple of grass blocks behind here. So we have 20 pumpkins in total now, in case I need another golem. This should definitely be fine. Right. Yeah, so I'm gonna pick up like half a stack of dirt. I'm gonna try out the 2 2 spruce tree farming here over at the Wounding Trader platform. So that's actually a really good area because it's slime chunk free. Already spawn proof here of the sea lanterns. We might get a one trader to spawn. It's just a huge area where saplings could land on and it's also pretty blast resistant. Okay, let's get started. So the idea to do the two with spruce tree farming, the way I'm doing it now was actually pitched to me by someone called Magic in the Cycroft Discord. So we're gonna surround a middle pillar here with you know, at least four spots for the two with two trees. I think that was possible layout. But we have 16 more. I think we can add another 2 by 2 spot here on each of the four sides. So like this. Okay, and then we would grow... Maybe let's actually just start with four trees in total. Yeah, we grow trees around it. There you go, and the last one over here. Maybe next time we, we can try it with eight trees. Okay, and then I'm supposed to pillar up in the middle here, a blast resistant block until we reach the top, and then I yeah, use TNT to slowly blow up the tree. I reached the top, let's try this out. Obviously I'm a bit worried about those explosions. I'm pretty certain we could at least tank one hit with the TNT, but getting hit by the TNT and then falling down on top of this might kill us. Um, a bit scared right now. Let's just try it out. So let's see, maybe if I stand here. Oh, didn't take any damage at all. <laughs> okay, that was pretty decent. <laughs> Okay, um, didn't keep track of it. How many locks did we get from this? I don't know. Should we just try the next one right away? Be at the same height? Guess so. So magic also told me I should actually just dig down one block so the feet are shielded from the explosion. Does this work? Let's see how much damage we actually take. Yeah, we do take damage here and also it's really bad for a good armor. Um... Should we try the without armor ones? <laughs> so far it's working pretty well. Um, a bit scared to try this without armor. Mm, let's try. This is so close. Yeah, it's a bit, a bit too much damage <laughs> for comfort. Um, Kinda of works, but it would definitely be better if we had more trees around. Could also imagine might be a good idea just to get some scaffolding. Get to safety each time. Maybe we'll try that as well. So I have the scaffolding, but at the same time I'm aware that I'm about to run out of TNT and I don't have any more sand around here, only sandstone, and as far as I know there's also none left at the sand farming area. So we need to farm some sand again. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm just gonna deposit all my stuff here. Maybe except the bone meal, we need it for sand farming. Yeah, I got four buckets. Don't even know where the fifth one is. Might even be better if we get a couple more buckets even. Hmm. Yeah, so I was thinking then grabbing some gunpowder on the mob farm and just go straight over to the sand farming area. Actually, I'm gonna farm a little bit more iron first. We can craft a couple more buckets. Last time the lack of buckets was definitely a bottleneck.
Oh my god, I just got an achievement. Cover me with diamonds. Diamond armor saves lives. So it finally happened. I had a zombie or skeleton spawning with diamond armor. And it also dropped it. So we have a diamond chest plate now. Now it doesn't have any enchantments on it. So that's why right now it wouldn't be too useful. Compared to the chest plate you know, with unbreaking and protection and even so on. Um, but we'll definitely keep that. Oh, I actually just got another advancement. Ironic. Make an iron farm and get a full stack of iron ingots. I don't think I'm supposed to get that already. But after the rush of getting diamond armor, I just kept going here. In the hopes of getting more diamond armor, but obviously it's so rare. Didn't get any. This is actually... Yeah, this is definitely not a vanilla uh, advancement. Let's check it out. Ah, here it is. Make an iron farm and get a full stack of iron ingots. But I think this is a dead end. Didn't unlock any more advancements. Getting a whole stack of iron ingots. Probably also the sign I should probably stop doing this. So in total we almost have two stacks of iron ingots now. Even 12 baked potatoes from killing zombies. Right, so I'm just gonna take 15 of those iron ingots. We always have over 100 left. Uh, and make buckets out of this. So then we have a total of 9 buckets. Yep, so we can fill the whole hot bar now with buckets. That's gonna help a lot. Okay, I can also pick up my good bow again. Some bone blocks. We wanna bring over for the coral farming. Okay, mm, what else is noteworthy? So I did get a lot of enchanted chainmail armor again. Hey, okay, something happens to my armor at this point. We pretty much have a replacement. And I even got a lot of enchanted iron helmets now. Um, what's kind of missing for the helmets is pretty much just some durability. If I get another enchanted helmet that has some durability, we can combine all of this. And we have even better armor. Oh, one more thing. This time I kept all the bones and crafted them into bone blocks. We have over one double chest of bone blocks now. So we can also use them as building blocks. Alright, let's go back to farming sand. Been a while since I've been here. And to be honest, I didn't think it would actually come back here before we have some dispensers where we could automate this. But since we need some TNT, yeah, it is definitely necessary. There have also been some changes to dead corals from the mod maker. Uh, it's now eight times slower. The last time I complained a little bit that it's a bit too fast for my taste. And now it got nerfed a bit. But I'm not using the latest version of the Skyblock mod because I'm still in 1.19.0. Main reason is Cycraft is also 1.19.0, so I don't want to switch uh, between the mods all the time. So that's the reason why I haven't updated this world. But we have to see, I mean, there's also now 1.20 content already, uh, with the new camels, bookshelves and so on. Uh, bamboo can be crafted into planks. Um, so I'm not sure when this is gonna be released, but if I'm still playing Skyblock at that time, I would also not mind to update the world to 1.20. Time to head back, I got almost 5 stacks of TNT and plenty of sand. Alright, so let's try this again. This time we can jump to the scaffolding for safety. Is this far enough? Yeah, I think so. Okay, does it actually take out one layer at a time? Pay attention maybe? I actually couldn't tell what is in one layer or two. So maybe count the amount of prismarine we pick up. 38 now. Yeah, it seems like it's actually one layer at a time. Yeah, and one prismarine again. Okay. It's gonna be expensive when it comes to TNT. Oh my god. I would assume it would be much better if we would actually grow multiple trees. Because the TNT should be able to take out more than doing right now. Yeah, so let's actually just mine those trees. And then we try it out with, um, with more dirt, more saplings and more trees. Now I'm actually at a point without any leaves on the side. It's a bit tricky to get to the scaffolding. A bit of a problem. Also, we actually only got... Exactly the amount of sapling spec that we invested, plus one. So we started with 26, now we have 27. I would assume if we grow even more trees around this, we wouldn't get enough sapling spec anyway in the first place. So I'm not entirely sure if this would actually work out. Also I have the feeling we would be better off if we maybe just dig down here. Maybe two blocks? 
Do this. Ah, there's a couple leftover blocks. Maybe only dig out down one. That could work. Oh, I'm taking so much damage, this is not good for the armor. So let's try digging down only one block. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah? Look, we're getting better results this way. Okay, I'm gonna mine the rest, I think, and then we grow... Yeah, I actually want to grow eight two by two trees, so I'm gonna farm a couple more saplings first, and we can grow eight. I think I also ran into an issue. So this was a couple versions ago when Mojang changed something. You can no longer grow the two by two trees if there's other locks nearby. I think that's the issue we're having right now here. We bow mill this all day, and it wouldn't grow. This is such a dumb change, actually. Oh man, do we have to grow this now in a certain order, maybe? Can grow this. Can grow this. Maybe I can grow this. I guess we have to actually grow this in a certain order. Uh, why? Oh, okay, that one worked. That one worked as well now. Really strange. Okay. Um, I think instead of. Oh, everything filled with leaf. Instead of pillaring up with prismary block, I think it's just gonna use scaffolding here. Well, it looks like if you have more trees around, doing it one layer at a time definitely has a point. Getting really good results now. I'm just really unsure I'm gonna get enough saplings back this way. Let's try the next layer. Definitely can't complain about the amount of locks I'm getting from this. Compared to chopping with the wooden axe, it's really good. So I leave the stuff for tree farming here, just gonna bring home the logs that I got. Frostwalker iron boots, here we go. Also I was just thinking, we have so many books from fishing, it might be something useful for our diamond armor and found the perfect stuff. So you get two protection, three books and unbreaking. Put it on diamond armor, it's pretty much as good as it gets. And protection four, unbreaking. So maybe cheaper the other way around. No. And there we go. Protection 4, unbreaking 3. Yep. It's 3 really well. <laughs> okay, now we can finally start building the fast travel tunnel. I also checked again. This is not inside of the spawn chunks. The border is roughly yeah, where the tree farm over there is. Frosted eyes actually causes some lag, so I definitely don't want that inside of the spawn chunk, so that was important to me. Right, so the actual design for the tunnel, it's yeah more important that it's affordable, then it looks nice. So I'm gonna place down some bone blocks here at the bottom. Then here would have the layer of water on top. Then yeah, planks, really cheap, on the side and on top some prismarine slabs that are not flammable. I guess this is good enough. So I placed down all the bone blocks, but I just realized like placing the floor first, then the walls, then the roof, and then the water might not be the best idea because we got a ton of mobs spawning. Or we got some slime spawning over here, yeah. There's some slime chunks, so this is actually really dangerous in case it gets night time now. I'm gonna spam that bed here to avoid any mobs spawning. The mobs which would actually be really helpful. That's something I've been talking about for a couple episodes already. Maybe we should be... Yeah, work on that soon. I hope the slime lets me sleep. There we go. I really don't want Bob spawning right now. This would be like almost certain death, I'm, I'm sure. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I guess we have to change our strategy. I'm not gonna start with the mob switch now. Um, I guess we're gonna build it in one go. So I'm already getting the water. We can build the walls and the roof also in one go.
So the tunnel is finished and now the best part, freezing all the water. Of course those glow squid will cause issues. I really don't get why they actually spawn in one high water. The normal squid can only spawn in two high water. Not sure why Mojang made an exception for those. Be more annoying than the bats. Almost as useless. The first two blocks will melt again, but I think that's fine. You can just place, or actually first three blocks melting, but it's fine, we can just place blocks. Right, so let's try it out for the first time, our first fast travel tunnel. So we can reach a speed of 40 meters per second now. And quickly cover half a kilometer. Oh, there's one water source that wasn't frozen. <gasps> okay. <laughs> It's a bit scary here with overshooting. Maybe we should place some blocks here <laughs> to catch us. Okay, then, yeah, here we also had three blocks. There we go. Next, we can bring the pigs over. Good that we have the boat tunnel. Okay, let's try to break the boat without harming the pig. There we go. And into the boat again. Our three pigs have been brought over to the enclosure. Yes, three pigs. Also the baby pig that has grown up and now got an early episode was also brought over. Okay, now we need to start breeding those guys. Pigs, of course, eat everything. I actually looked it up so we can either breed them with potatoes, carrots, or even beetroot. Didn't know that, that you actually can also use beetroot, but it's uh, more expensive to farm. You only get one beetroot per plant while you get multiple carrots, so... I guess let's just go for carrots or maybe potatoes. There's also a point getting a poisonous potato. According to the achievements, you can convert a spider into a cave spider for poisonous potato. Yeah, I guess then we're gonna do potato farming. I guess the fastest way to do potato farming for us would be just dual wielding. Like this. But it's already the first poisonous potato. I have one chest worth of potatoes now. This should be enough to get us started. Okay, let's start breeding the pigs. And we can also speed it up a little bit by force feeding them. So feeding potatoes to the baby pigs works exactly the same as with the frogs. Feeding them one potato will reduce the remaining time by 10%. And it's not additive, it's actually multiplicative. So apparently this is how it works for most of the babies. But I do know that for donkeys, because I've been just doing this sidecraft, it's still additive. So every time I feed 40 sugar to the baby donkey, it will be fully grown up. But with the pig, uh, we always reduce the remaining time by 10%. So if we feed it like a stack or so, then there's still a couple of seconds left. But it shouldn't take long and it should also be grown up. There we go. A few hours later, I almost have 500 pigs in there. So I'm actually at a point where breeding them anymore would also result in some entity cramming. So if I hold some potatoes, they all come towards me. It's getting really crammed around me. Right, it's probably best to stop now. I'm also running low on potatoes. Only got a couple of stacks left at this point. As you can see, some of them already died because of entity cramming. Right, time to some culling. I think I'm just gonna keep like a hundred of those so we can do more pig breeding. So for next episode, I my plans would be that I would actually make a specialized setup for pig breeding and then also already keep in mind that we have to convert them into zombified piglins with the lightning rod. So I would try to make some kind of setup um, where they are funneled as dense as possibly next to a lightning rod or something like that. Um, so I'm just gonna keep a hundred. And I guess I killed the rest. Man's gotta eat. So definitely wanted to get a lot of pork chop. Wait, does this not have... It has fire aspect. Hello? Oh. Hmm. I see. So we kill most of them directly. And only the ones that get hit by the sweeping have a chance to burn to death to draw pork chop. Hmm. 
I'm pretty sure if I would use the bow instead, salts might look a bit different. It actually never occurred to me. I can definitely put the sword in the offhand to get the looting effect and shoot him with the bow. I guess that, that works fine. 29, 31. Yes, this way we always get some pork chop, okay. It's a bit tedious, we have enough arrows. I guess I'm gonna do it this way. Isa, I'm the biggest noob of all time. Oh, there's something going on that might not be intended. I guess I'm just way too used uh, to fully automatic animal farms. So I've been killing those pigs with the bow, got a couple of stacks of pork chops, but now if I shoot them, they drop raw pork chop all of a sudden. Like all of them, why does my flame bow no longer, no longer work? Eh? Ah, mystery solved. It's actually raining, but I do have rain disabled because it usually messes with the YouTube compression and, and so on. Yeah, you could have seen it <laughs> with the gray background. Of course, it doesn't work when it's raining. Okay, it was a little bit confusing. I guess from now on, I try to keep the rain effects if I can remember for the normal gameplay, but I'm definitely gonna continue disabling it for the tile lapses. Because there it's really annoying and yeah, people usually complain there's actually rain in the time lapse. Alright, then I'd say we made a lot of progress for today. Built this long tunnel, tried to do spruce trees, upgraded our gear, the mob farm, and made the pig pen and got a lot of food. So definitely progress was made today. Next episode, I want to either work on the mob switch or continue with the picks. So I have a setup in mind, I haven't decided yet um, how we could maybe treat the picks efficiently and also automatically get um, a certain amount of picks next to the lightning rod. So just a reminder, we want to get a golden apple to convert a zombie villager to a villager and we need gold for that. The way to get gold is convert the picks with a lightning strike into zombified picklins that can drop gold. But that's uh, <laughs> the other reason why we're actually breeding those picks. Okay, uh, yeah, next episode we're gonna work on that. That's it for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye!